Hello my dear friends, Namaste and welcome in our yet another new wonderful divine episode of Spiritual Talks. So I'm Kavita, your host and today we are going to talk on temples because these days Ram Mandir Charcha mein hai. So we have a wonderful master, Yash Shekharji from Delhi and who always solve your queries, your scientific queries with spiritual perspective. Yes, she welcome. Namaste. Thank you so much for inviting me again. Thank you for coming and uh, I'm so excited to discuss about temples. Mm -hmm. So what do you think the importance of temples in India? Look, in Indian culture, Indian heritage has so much uh, uh, effect and uh, so much uh, things are happening in India right now. But otherwise, if you see always temples have been a very strong and core part of the Indian culture. So, right. from traditionally, temples have been the cultural centers, all the growth, development, be it economic, social, spiritual, cultural, knowledge, education, dance, music, everything has been revolving around the temples. So, temples form the core part of uh, India's growth, I would say. I'm not talking about just this time, I'm talking about like thousands of years ago also, if you see. In fact, temple design, temple building has always been a very... Uh, core architecture perspective angle also for everyone. Anybody who wants to improve, improvise, be it at a personal level, social level, they have always been guided by the temples. Right. In fact, some of the temples, if you notice, uh, like Maharashtra has few temples um, and uh, South India has great temples, they are so well designed and and it's very, uh, very shocking to even imagine that how could they build such temples thousands of years ago with such kind of precision like the temples, the, the kind of art articles are there in the temples, the kind of idols, the size, the shape, the intricacies, they're all so beautiful, so well designed. So that shows that a lot of attention, energy, love went to build a temple to this level. And also uh, glad I can say that the Indian population, the Indian people, doesn't matter of what time, what age, what kind of cultural effect, what kind of, what part of India, they have all been uh, providing their own energy, they have been providing their own contribution to build this temple and also maintain this temple culture. So, I am talking not only about Ram Mandir, I am talking about uh, nearly all the temples and they are all revered ones. A lot of temples are based on Goddess, Shakti worship, a lot of temples are based on Lord Shiva, a lot of temples are based on Vishnu, a lot of temples are based on R Lord Ram, Lord Krishna. So all of them have been uh, providing a very positive spiritual vibration as well as giving direction to the minds of millions of people to follow the narrative of what these great heroes talked in their own way. Thank you Yash for elaborating in a so nice way. But I want to understand that why temples only? Because people or we keep idols at home also, right? Yeah. What's the difference between... Uh, the energy, why we get more energy at temples? So let me explain it from a scientific perspective. Every product is a result of a process. If the process is well done, is well designed, is followed properly, the product will always be very good. If I see the narrative from the angle of the home worship, so there's something called temple worship, which is more in the outside domain, and there's something called home worship, which you do at your inner domain. Obviously, some people build their dedicated temples in their houses also, which is, uh, which is another, I will say, amalgamation of uh, the concept. But let's see a simple uh, way that someone is worshipping gods and goddesses in their own house. So, in that perspective, you will see that the energy is coming from the members of the family mm -hmm. and the staff they have. Okay. So, the members of the family and the staff they have, they combined give their energy on the process. So it may happen that sometimes, because the members of the family will always be less in number, so it may happen that certain protocols, certain procedures are not followed that properly. I would say not, not followed that vehemently as it should be. And we will say a cha chalta type because, you know, we try to do our best. Like in, there's a very good word called yatha sambhav in Sanskrit, which basically means do as much as it is possible. So when you do in your home, then the, the, the guidelines are getting a bit diluted because some member of the family may be available who is regularly doing it or some member of the family may not be available also. So you are trying to adjust to what is possible. 
Right. This is what happens in a, with a grihastha or a householder. Whenever they do something, they are they are into a, a mode called parallel processing. They are doing too many things in the world. Whereas someone who is a sannyasi or someone who is uh, in a mountain or doing anything very dedicated out of like a dedicated pack practice, is doing it in a very different way because there is no parallel processing. There is a singular processing. So anybody who is doing too many things will have a challenge matching the efficiency of someone who is doing only one dedicated things. That's what research is. True. That's what science is. That's why you will see some of the brands, I'm coming to the commercial world, when they make a product also, they will make it so well because they are having very few directions. They have a very, very dedicated practice to build that product. So similarly in your life, if you are giving chance to idol worship and there are few members of the family who are dedicating it, you do it in certain way. But if in the temple, there are a dedicated team, there's an organization working in a proper way where everyone has a dedicated task, the proper delegation, the proper timeliness, and there's also a proper emotion. So I'm referring to, to Toyota production system, TPS. It says about uh, money, machine, man, method. And it also includes motivation. Mm -hmm. So that motivation is very important. We take it very casually. It's not like that. You ask any good any good TV actor or any good film actor, if they are not in a good mental state, their shot will get affected. The whole sequence will get affected. Very so true. you have to do anything in a very proper way. Because normally what is human being's prime work? They are eating experience and giving performance. Anybody, anybody of any industry, be it uh, in, uh, engineer, be it a doctor, be it an actor, be it a politician, uh, anybody is trying to get imbibe experience through direct or media and trying to give a performance. And when I say performance, I don't mean something like casual. They are doing, they are putting their heart, their soul in that performance. And that's how you make it good. So that's what is happening. When, you're, when, you, when a temple is being run properly, you will see every fine aspect of it is being properly taken care of. There's a lot of feelings emotions, yet intellect also. Mm -hmm. It's not that it's only uh, uh, right-brained. So when I say right-brained, I mean the emotional aspect. When I say the left-brained, I mean the technical aspect, logical aspects. So it's a, it's a beautiful marriage between both the left brain and right brain that a proper temple is being designed and maintained. And obviously, who is supporting it? How much support it's getting from the consciousness, human consciousness, that makes a huge difference. So when you're doing it in the ho house, your own home, the level of, uh, I would say, appreciation and the level of dedication is marginalized by your tasks, the other tasks, because they are families, they are children, they are, can be elders, they can be staff, there are too many tasks. But when you are doing it for dedicate for a temple, each person has a dedicated role and timeliness as well as scope. What if, if someone has negative emotions about temple or about God? Yeah, so see, see in, again the both perspective. In, if in a house there are five members and one of the members have a negative emotion towards that aspect, so there are four thinking positive, one thinking negative. Right. So the effect is still substantial. It's like a 80-20 uh, ratio. But if in a temple there is a staff of 50, let's say there is a 50 uh, number of staff working dedicated for this temple cause and two or three or five are thinking negative, so 90% is positive, 10% is negative. So when the system becomes larger, the whole effect of any negativity becomes lesser. Right. And that's why the temples were designed since ancient times for this. That's why people like to go in temples and for that matter, not only temples. If you go to any good religious place where there's a dedicated team maintaining the place, you feel a change in your mind state. Very true. And it's very well designed. It's actually very scientific. It's working on the five senses. So if you go to a temple, you will see that the touch of the floor. So you'll be asked to leave your shoes, or your footwear outside, the touch of the floor. So the touch, the sense called touch gets in picture. Then you see the grandeur, the statue, the decoration, the flower effect, the beauty, sight. Now the aroma, the kind of incense being burned there, smell. So you see smell came, then they gave you a prasad or something to taste. So taste also gets involved. So you see smell, taste, sight, and then you see the, you can hear the conch or some kind of, uh, you know, temple bells. 
Right. So, the yeah. sense called sound. So, you see the order, you are getting affected at the level of smell, taste, sight, sound, touch. So, all five senses. So, all five senses get involved and as the number of sense gets involved, your mind has to get involved. Aankhe jo dekhengi aur kaan jo sunenge, dimaag wohi sochega. Very true. It's very difficult to get out of this matrix. So, the mind is surrounded by the matrix of five senses. So, any good temple will give lot of focus on all these five senses. That's why I would expect that people who go to temples, they should be at least try, I'm not saying be, but at least try to be silent, try to be in that state and try to have a good experience and think positive about everyone. Because a lot of times there's too much crowd in the temple, you will see each person in a way fighting with the other person. So, instead of that, you should feel that, okay, it's a consciousness and as many people are happy, the more spread of happiness will come back to them. Very true. So, that's why senses, understanding of the five senses is very important to invoke the sixth sense. Without involving the five senses, you can't invoke the sixth sense. I'll give a very simple example. In earlier times, there was a concept of Devyastra. Mm -hmm. Like right now, all the politics in the world is around nuclear weapons at the global level. In ancient times, it used to be around Devyastra. Forget about the ethical issue, let us take the strength issue. Everything was around Devyastra. Whoever had more powerful Devyastra and the power to invoke, use and return was considered a better spiritual warrior. Now, in that case also, when the Devyastras are involved, it is all about who is using it, how it is being used. So, everything is in a, in a particular order. So, there is a very strong importance of order in all these things. You have to have an order to run a system in a proper way. Without having a proper order, you can't run something. So, same with temples and now in India also temples are more about devotion. Whereas, if you see the cultural effect, early it was not like that. Mm -hmm. Temples were cultural centers, also fighting centers. One of the most powerful fighting arts of the world is Kalari Piyattu. And there are certain movies also which have showed that art and it is again a, again a uh, linked with temples, directly protecting the temples. And it is not only in India, the world's one of the most deadliest fighters are fighters from Shaolin temple. Again, it is not, it's not, it's not a dojo, it is not like a akhada. They are, they are actually temple fighters and they are among the best in the world. Nearly every good artist including Bruce Lee and all, they have all been somehow connected to Shaolin temple. And the training there is crazy high and it is a temple again. So, in India right now, we are seeing temple from a devotional perspective. But actually temples were, I would say a cultural uh, scientific research perspective where a human being is trying to reach the best of their consciousness, whichever field. It could be music, it could be art, it could be dance, it could be martial arts, it could be fighting skills, it could be singing skills, painting skills, sculpture skills. What, where the problem starts is that when people who have not mastered something start administrating that process. So, if I am not a good painter and I try to guide the painters, I am doing a crazy loss to the culture. If I am not a good dancer, I am trying to train the dancers, again I am doing a loss. The expert has to be of core competency and you see this in every part of the world. If you go to a hospital and you have a tooth problem, you will not go to a, a, a heart specialist, right? You will, you will go to someone who is specializing in that particular field of teeth. So, my point is this that in any kind of uh, concept, in any kind of culture, the expert should be given the work. Either you be an expert or give the work to an expert. If you, if you learn ABC and try to do XYZ, you are just heading for a disaster. So, something like that is there. When you are doing from at your home also, nothing, nothing wrong with that. Please do it very properly. But again, the point which comes here is that there should be someone guiding there. So, choosing to a master yeah. to learn all these things yeah. is also a big task because without understanding, without knowing, just going uh, to any word and I learn something and I am practicing something else and I am performing something uh, else. So, it, it won't even work out. I will stick to the point of core competency. So, use the word master. So, here the actual technical word would be priest. Master in English is what is Swami in Hindi or Sanskrit. So, basically again, when you use the word master or Swami, you are actually talking about someone who is an expert or Daksh. 
So basically, anybody who has mastered the art, like like in martial arts, you get, uh, in, especially in the Chinese and Japanese martial arts, you get titles. You know, you you are called Shifu or someone. So it it all shows that you have mastered something to a certain level. So same thing for for this. If you are going for temple worship, there has to be a priest, and the priest also should have a head priest. Mm -hmm. No one can be a self-styled commander. That I, my words are the you know the ultimate words in this. There has to be a pro protocol. There has to be hierarchy. And again, the scriptures are a very good reference point. Like in the law, the the way the legislature forms the law, judiciary, you know, studies it and gives decisions and all. Everything is happening in a very proper order. There's smooth order. Similarly, here there has to be an order. There has to be someone who is like a priest who is reporting to someone higher priest, so that in case of any confusion, if you are having any doubts, because asking questions is very important. Any kind of growth involves asking questions. Nobody should stop you from asking questions. And the day a culture stops people from asking questions, that is the time when the cultural fall starts. There is no problem in asking questions. If you have a doubt, you should ask the person, the next level priest. If he or she is not able to give an answer, ask the next superior authority priest. So there is a hierarchy there. And there are a lot of examples of this. Obviously, all this requires sadhana. Anything you do in life, you have to follow a sadhana. And don't think it's only in Indian culture. Any strong culture, any time in the world, is a very good saying. I don't, so I don't fear your 10,000 moves which you have done once. I fear your one move which you have done 10,000 times. The practice. The practice. And when you start practicing, first of all, you become a self-reference. Because honesty is first of all primary a self-consciousness thing. That's why I, use, I like this word called integrity. This slight difference between honesty and integrity. Mm -hmm. When nobody is watching and you are doing the right thing, that's what's integrity. And when you are adjusting as per your comfort, then that's not integrity, that's comfort. Because people always adjust. Always. You will see this, that if, uh, if a fly, if a fly falls in a cup of tea, people will throw the cup of tea. If a same fly falls in a cane of ghee, they will throw the fly, not the cane of ghee. Right. Very so, you see how, yeah. how easily we adjust to the comfort, but that is not integrity. Integrity is doing the right thing, even when then no, nobody else is doing the right thing. Just because you feel it's right, and this case here, the spiritual transformation starts mm -hmm. when you do something like this. I don't know what I should call it: divine force, or supernatural element, or universal energy, or mother nature. Something watches you. Your confidence gets to another level when you are having a high degree of integrity. Because in that situation. You are not doing it for others, you are doing it first for yourself. And when you can do it for yourself, then you can do it for others very easily. Okay. You can't convince someone about something which you can't convince yourself about. I can't drink too much alcohol and give a lecture on being a teetotaler. So basically, I can't be, I can't be drinking and, not, and talking about not drinking. I can't, be, I can't be doing something which is not allowed in that regime. I am not saying follow all the orders or follow all the routines or, all, or follow all the martial systems, no. But whichever martial system you are following, follow that to a certain degree. So, that auth authenticity to our own self is own self. very much important. Honesty best. and integrity is first only with yourself. Because right. when you are not honest and having a high degree of integrity towards yourself, trust me, your power of talking to others and convincing them will not be proper. I have known certain actors, I am talking about Hollywood actors, they, I have seen that before doing a particular shot, they actually perform that to such a high extent and degree that when they do the actual shot, it comes to a crazy high degree. And I have seen this in various streams by various people, they are not the real heroes, but they are the real heroes. And they are both men and women mm -hmm. and equal, equal number of men I have seen and equal number of women I have seen who are, I would say, heroes in their own way. If a, if a lady is doing a job and taking care of the family, that itself is a very great act of heroism. Imagine the parallel processing with efficiency. 
Any one mistake can bring disaster and she does it for decades. So that is why I, I love the culture when children acknowledge that. So I was just explaining the concept, the whole ideology that when you are doing something, whatever kind, you have to do it very properly. And then the question anybody can ask because the whole field of religion and spirituality sometimes become very subjective. Actually the difference between religion and, sub, and spirituality is primary between the level of subjective approach and level of objective approach. So anybody can have a confusion because nowadays the youngsters and I am very happy about it ask questions. They will not accept a ritual or religious practice if they do not find it logically appealing to it and that is a very good concept that is required because when you follow something just out of faith it can be affected in a negative way if someone who believes in a stronger faith than you talks to you. But when you have a logical interpretation and conclusion your faith gets anchored and that creates stability and that helps it to be practiced all your life. So then the question comes how to turn it from a subjective approach to an objective approach and the single word is measurement. Anything which you cannot measure you cannot improve even scientifically we study about Six Sigma. So it talks about design, measure, analyze, implement, control. I will not make this interview go towards that direction in too deep, too much depth but actually the point is that if you cannot measure some, something you cannot improve. So let us see someone is doing a particular mantra mala of a particular deity, mm -hmm. any deity of his or her choice and each mala normally is of 108 counts. Okay? Some use beads also for that, some use mentally also. Now anybody who is doing it one mala, let us take the consideration that their concentration level is the same. So if anybody doing at one mala, someone doing at two mala, someone doing at ten mala, so always the ten one is better than the two one or the so that creates a measurement. Now this is an example of a heterogeneous combination where I am comparing individuals. Now imagine the situation when you are comparing only with yourself. So keeping your concentration level constant, if you are doing it a one mala every day and you start doing four malas every day, again that shows a improvement. So by noting this down somewhere, this this is this in software language is called metadata. Mm -hmm. Metadata means data about data. Can be your guru. Can be your guru because it helps you to understand which way you are going. We call also call it trend. So any kind of graph looks about the trend. So when you start measuring your performance, and in the ancient Hindu culture, I am talking about Sanatan Dharma. Please understand bhakti was not the only method. Mm -hmm. We are too much about bhakti these days. There is lot about shraddha and bhakti and shraddha are again slightly different. We talk about bhakti, that is very nice, very good. But bhakti is the starting step. Bhakti, shraddha. Shraddha now in also involves discipline mm -hmm. because the word, the word bhakti has a English terminology as devotion. Shraddha is reverence. So you see the, the angle is changes slightly. So this is the way you measure things how you are improving. So your knowledge, your wisdom, your skill set, everything is a part of the culture. So you have to keep improving it, improvising yourself to know which way you are going. So and generally bhakti is linked with, we, have, we all use a lot of mantras in, in this worship which is very good but also the way, the way your tonality is, the way your counts are, that is why uh, singers can be very good in uh, devotion and they sing devotional songs they can touch millions of uh, people because they have studied the music. But devotion by itself is, it's, is different, someone can be not having a good voice still be very devoted oh. and concentration is something a third. You see the number of elements, devotion is one element, tonality is another element, concentration is third element, your physical fitness is fourth element. You may be very good in all the first three aspects but very bad in the fourth one. So that is why I am saying it is a process. So youngsters should see things from a perspective of science because a lot of times they say that oh they toh, hum pe vishwas nahi karte. Give it a chance, study it from a scientific spirituality's perspective and you will see there is an order there, there is a, there is a, there is a proper order there. So there are elements in any kind of worship and if you are not having the basic elements, you can't, you can't talk about the higher elements. 
even and what happened uh, in earlier times what started happening is that there was concept of uh, measurement. So, the word Siddhi actually is pointing towards measurement. Mm -hmm. The word Siddhi or Siddh is very, very, very uh, corris much corresponding to the terminology of mastership. Mm -hmm. So, if I say ye Siddh hai, ya isne chiz Siddh kar li hai, this means that person has proven that thing at a personal perspective also called realization. So, reading a book about swimming and being an expert swimmer has a difference that the former one has not realized it and the later one has realized it. So, similarly it comes in any spiritual concept. Obviously, there are Vidyas and Mahavidyas. So, Vidya is knowledge, Mahavidya is great knowledge. So, I will not go too much in the intricacies here, but overall with measurement you can see the difference. I talked about a basic Siddhi or Asan Siddhi. Mm -hmm. If you study any Indian scripture, if you study Durga Sapshati, if you study anything uh, substantial, they talk about Asan Siddhi. You will see if they worship and talk about Goddess, they will say, she sits in Padmasan. Right. If you see great yogis, like I would mention Lairi Masha of Kriya Yoga and different yogis, they all prefer Padmasan. Right. And so, you, you have also mastered this. I, uh, I was Padmasana. very focused on Padmasan. Right. So, I, uh, because in, in the school I learned from the Himalayan school, one and a half hours of Padmasan was needed to be a master. At, at what age you learned it? I started very young. I was very obsessed with Padmasan. Interestingly, when I learned Padmasan, I never knew its name is Padmasan. Oh. I used to like and enjoy being in that posture. But yes, so I could sit 45 minutes very comfortably, initially itself, and I took it to 1 hour 32 minutes by wow. gradual practice. Wow. But you see, I am not saying 1 hour 30 minutes and I am not saying 1 hour 35 minutes. I am saying 1 hour 32 minutes. That is called measurement and precision. Now, if I am talking about asan siddhi, asans are also of four kinds. Mm -hmm. Padmasan is considered among the highest, followed by siddhasan followed by Sukhasan, followed by Vajrasan. Right. And imagine in Indian culture only Padmasan is considered. In other, like in Japanese culture, they are mostly in Vajrasan. If you see Japanese people, mm -hmm. they are sitting position. Right. Yes. And Vajrasan has its own advantage. It's very good for digestion and all. But you cannot compare it with Padmasan. So my point is, if there are two guys who are practicing, say Vajrasan, one is doing it for three hours and one is doing it for two hours, the two hours cannot tell the three hours. The less competent should not judge the more competent, if it comes on judgment. First of all, try to avoid judgment. But if it comes to judgment, the less competent should not judge the more competent. That's how anarchy starts. That's how disorder starts. And that's how self-styled, there has to be an order. And in any good organization, be it political, social, administrative, there has to be an order. There has to be a hierarchy. And when you are respecting the hierarchy, you are helping growth, not only for the system and the order, also for yourself. That's why being indisciplined is too easy. Falling is too easy. If you put water right now, it always goes from higher to lower potential. That's very, that's very normal. So, thinking negative, not following discipline, uh, waking up late in the morning, this all is very easy. There's no glory in this. Parting at night, awake at night, parting too much and then sleeping all day and then waking up, there is no glory in this. I know this is a lot of cultural, uh, lot of culture is considered style, there is no style in that. The style is sleeping on time, sleeping in less hours, reaching to a qualitative high state and then waking up to the, to the next morning. I am talking, also talking this because nobody is talking this. Just because nobody is talking this doesn't change the order. That is why there is so much effect of I would say drugs and liquor and all these things and all of them have a common chord. You will see people who consume drugs, people who are too much into liquor, they all will sleep very late, they all will wake up late. The whole, the whole body cycle is, is destroyed yeah. and it's, it has a scientific basis. What I am saying has a scientific basis, humans are living on planet earth and planet earth is revolving around star sun. So, the sunrise and sunset is an order. If you do not follow it, you will have consequences and that is why nearly all the animals have an order. The diurnal animals have an order, the nocturnal animals have an order. Birds, fishes, even insects have order. So, what is the reason like uh, these animals, we think that they do not have brain, 
uh, still they, they are so uh, uh, accurate and very uh, punctual with their timings, but human, so-called uh, intelligent being, they are like that. And when we wake up early in the morning, we can see that in two, three hours, we, we leave the entire, uh, I mean, half of the day. But if we wake up a little late, two hours late, we feel like very lazy and as like, uh, you know, we are not uh, happy at all. We are not enjoying that moment. So why is it so? So I will, you have asked two questions. So I'll ask, answer one by one. Yeah, the first question was about animals. First of all, we think that they don't have brain. Yeah. But uh, my thinking will not change the reality. True. <laughs> if from tomorrow I start thinking that a, a gorilla is very weak, <laughs> trust me, that will not make a gorilla weak. If I start thinking from tomorrow, tiger is a very weak animal, that will not make tiger a weak animal. So my thinking about something, if it's not properly investigated and analyzed, will not make it strong. It's not a proper measurement. Again, I'm coming on again measurement. I'll always keep coming back on measurement. So first of all, they have a brain. Scientifically studied studies also show that they have brains. But the certain lobes of human brain are more developed than animal brain. True. However, because they stay very close to nature, their whole genetic system is adopted to certain things to a very high extent. Like the way a fish can swim. Humans can't swim. Even tigers are very good swimmers. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is that because of their uh, the, the, the order they follow, the kind of lifestyle they have, they are better in certain skills. But human brain is designed to improvise and adopt to a very high degree. But that doesn't mean they cannot. They have a limited direction. Their direction is different. But in their skills, they do it. Like you can't compare a fish to a monkey. If you are doing a swimming competition and say fish is superior to monkey, and if you are, you know, it's, it's true, fish is superior to monkey in swimming, but a monkey is superior to fish in climbing. So you have to understand the perspective keeps changing. So each animal is needed by the planet. It's like we are not, we humans know something, but we don't know everything. If we could know everything and control nature, we could have had no collateral damage in tsunamis. We could have had controlled COVID in just one day. But we could not do that. So what I'm saying is that we are definitely the most advanced species on planet Earth, but we have certain limitations. And animals' brain also has certain substantial element of growth. Not compared to human brain. Human brain grows differently. Animal brain grows differently. But there is an order. And if we do things which suitable to human body and human mind, we remain healthy. And if we do things which are not suitable to human body and human mind, we don't remain healthy. Like practicing yoga. Right. Like why I have a very great reverence for Baba Ramdev. When he started speaking about yoga, very few people were speaking about yoga the way he was speaking. That created another, uh, I would say, level of uh, standardization. Even Patriji, what Patriji said about vegetarian culture, very few people were saying like that. So when you say, and okay, you can say, okay, hardly some people are vegetarian in the world, very less percentage, doesn't matter. Even if by your words, 10 people more become vegetarian, you have saved the life, life of thousands of animals. You have reduced the carbon emission. Because the because a lot of industries, uh, they produce a lot of uh, carbon dioxide and all. Now, so there is a proper measurement about that. So, when you are a vegetarian or a vegan, you are helping the planet also. I am not saying that you should, you should be, I have no one to dictate anyone that what should they should do or should not do. But I am saying certain choices have different effect. And certain choices will have different effects. Effect. If you mix calcium and chloride, you will never get water. Mm -hmm. So you have to follow order. So this is the first question's answer that yes, human brain and animal brain is different, but they are also improvising and growing. Not every two tiger is same. Not every two lion is same. Even in them, there is certain someone better than the other in certain aspects. So growth is happening in them also. Growth is happening in humans also. And in humans who are following certain order, you will see certain uh, certain people, certain individuals at very late age also are very fit. Our Prime Minister is very fit. Apart from all his skills, he is also very, very, very fit person. So, there is, I mean, reason behind it, the long practice definitely, of uh, Definitely, definitely. As I said, every product is a result of a process. Anybody who is practicing well will get the results. So, uh, who has stopped others to not to practice? <laughs> is, the, is it like only he is doing it, so he is getting the results. It's very good. And by see, looking at him, 
uh, youngsters, even people like me get motivated that, oh, wow. So, my point is that you just try to improve wherever you can improve, but you cannot dictate or lecture to others who are doing well and saying that, oh, no, you are, there is no, if you want to compare, compare at the same level. And now coming back to the second part of the question. So, basically, for, for us, for humans, we have to follow certain good culture and the basic thing is about medical, medical health. If you are following the right culture, it would give a different kind of lifestyle, different kind of mindset, different kind of physical habits. You will see people who are practicing any kind of yoga or any kind of disciplined arts. You will see that their fitness is much more higher than someone who is not doing anything. So you see, it's a very simple fact that anybody who follows any kind of fitness regime has certain substantial advantage over those who are not forming any kind of regime. And I'm not saying only yoga, even going to gym has its own advantage, doing meditation has its own advantage, doing bhakti has its own advantage. There are different elements in human consciousness and you develop every element through different kind of practice. So following any kind of discipline is good for body, good for mind. And then also it gives you the ability to encourage others, to motivate others. Because your society will be what you motivate others around you to be. If you are not motivating others, they would be motivating you. In any case, in any kind of social gathering, be it even of two people, one is affecting the other. So it's a responsibility, as a collective responsibility, you should be, if you have a good culture, if you have some good habits, it's very good to talk about that. Don't be shy of not talking about your good habits. Because I've seen people who don't have good habits, they are bragging too much about it. And people who have good habits are out of humility not saying anything. So, if you have certain certain good qualities, please speak about it and motivate others to be better human beings, better living beings also. Because having a responsibility to the planet, we only have one planet right now. We are on only planet Earth. So, we have a responsibility towards Earth, we have a responsibility towards nature, plants, animals and to ourselves, our families, friends, everyone. So, there are a lot of roles we are playing and let's try to play all the roles in the best possible way. Thank you so much, Yesh, for elaborating in such a wonderful way, in scientific perspective. So interesting the way you explain the uh, entire things. It's really very much important for our health and uh, in you know spiritual perspective. So friends, uh, I will take a small break. Please don't go anywhere. We will cover other questions in next episode. Thank you for watching it and please like, share, subscribe. Thank you so much. Thank you, Yesh. Thank you.